native of Sweden, Kent Olberg is recognized as one of the world's foremost wildlife sculptors and is based in Corpus Christi, Texas. Olberg is participating in an internationally curated exhibition entitled Birds and Art, located at Rockport Center for the Arts from February 1st to April 23rd, 2023. Kent Olberg, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm yeah. glad to be here. How long have you been practicing and um, what what is your preferred medium? Well, I've really been practicing my whole life. I played with clay as a kid. I made a living from sculpting. It's a different story. Living my dream, in other words. That's been about uh, 47 years. I've done probably 100 public monuments in the U.S. and internationally. Wow. From Cape Town to Sweden to all over, you know, yeah. One of my most honorable things is that I was commissioned to do the namesake of my hometown, Corpus Christi. It's a 15-foot figure standing on the main street in Corpus Christi, overlooking, overlooking the sea. So that's a great honor. But I mean, it's not by any means the biggest piece. Mm -hmm. I've done a tremendous amount of work, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. The biggest piece I've ever done and certainly the biggest wildlife piece ever done, is in Omaha, Nebraska. It is, it is 58 geese flying all through the city with eight-foot wingspan. Wow. And they take up five city blocks. And, wow. they, and they start engaging the urban territory. They're flying through buildings that have the traffic light, flying into buildings. And they also make a transfer from bronze to stainless steel when they start interacting with modern architecture. I grew up in a fishing village in the North Sea on an island. And as kids, we worked in the fishing fleet in the summer. And, and then they dump all these sea creatures and fish on the deck. You stand up in your knees and we had to sort them out. And I mean, I become a naturalist. I love nature, you know. And then I left the fishing village to the capital of Stockholm to went to art school. And that was a hell of a change for me. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, that was in the 60s. And realism was not permitted. Hmm. About the first year of training, we worked on classical classical training. We worked on, on live models, nude models and stuff. But then we were supposed to do our own thing. And I sculpted an abstract kind of stylized bear. And my teacher said, what the hell is this? I said... It's, an, it's my thing, sir. Well, it's been done. It's not to be done anymore, you know, and stuff. And, and he said, well, he was a nice man, too. He said, you never make a living sculpting animals. Mm -hmm. and, and he was right, probably. So I took the museum route. I don't know if you knew, but in those days, Europeans were enamored by the Wild West. We watched black and white movies, you know, John Wayne and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, so, and then when they offered me <laughs> the job, to head up the African exhibit, to be the curator. I wasn't sure, but then I had discovered the Western art movement was underway. Mm -hmm. And they were realism. They did, they depicted bison and everything, you know, and I mean, realistic stuff. And I thought, yes, maybe I could. And after two years, I jumped off the bridge to do my sculptures full time. So let's talk a little bit about your involvement in, bir in birds and art. Can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Yeah, it's, it's a bluebird and it's called Bluebird Sings. And, uh, you know, bluebirds, they're, they're singing. It's always been very romantic, you know. I mean, uh, uh, Wallace Stegner, you know, um, uh, what's called, you know, Bluebird Sings to Lemonade Springs and, and stuff like that. So I want to sculpt a bluebird that sings, but I created an um, an abstract notes underneath, you know, like a plane. But they're highly abstract. A lot of people think it's a fence, and it's okay. It's, <laughs> it's a fence as well, you know. But he's also singing, and uh, so that was an inspiration for me. And then the sculpture shapes, I can have all sorts of fun with with shapes with this stuff, you know. Yeah. Nice. So tell us a little bit about the scale. How? What are we looking at as far as scale for well, this? Well, this is a small piece. This is a life-size bluebird. Just oh, about. I see. 
Let's talk about a little bit of um, the pieces that you have that were purchased for the permanent collection at Rockport Center for the Arts. I love this one is more abstract than the other pieces. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, it's five foot tall and it's in the sculpture garden, in the old sculpture garden of Rockport Art Center. And we were thinking about moving it to the new sculpture garden, but the old sculpture garden is so natural and beautiful. And so it's there and yeah, I, I like abstract design, but natural, you know, by nature, mm -hmm. and, uh, and especially with stainless steel. And uh, so I like to talk about nature in a right way, but I can also stylize it. And then especially using stainless steel. This is whooping cranes. And um, it's called uh, Rites of Spring, I call it. Yeah, Rites of Spring, two whooping crane dancing together. And it's also in the old sculpture garden in Rockport. It belongs to Rockport Art Center. It's all Rockport Art Center, but, you know, extended. And it's 15 foot high. And the last one we have um, that sits very prominently at Rockport Center for the Arts is uh, this, this particular piece. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, and it, it's five foot, it's eight foot tall. And it's at the entrance. I was honored to have it right at the entrance at the new art center. And uh, it is two seahorses. They they are very fascinating creatures, and they do occur on the Texas coast too, wash ashore sometimes. And I found one there. But but I studied seahorses. I'm also a diver. I, I never sculpt anything I haven't experienced and seen in real life, because I so I could tell the truth about them. And the seahorses are really interesting. They're made for life, but the lifespan is quite short, a year or two. Mm. But they meet for life and every morning they have a dance together, an elaborate dance, the male and the female. And then when she's ready, she lays her eggs in his belly pouch. And he hatches them, he feeds them in his belly. And then when he's ready, his belly is blown. He's really highly pregnant. You know, she's off having fun and he's <laughs> having a baby. And then he gives birth to sometimes 100 babies, you know. And I thought it's so cool. And, you know, of course, if you look at it, it's also they make an upside down heart, the tails. As a master artist, uh, you have an exhibit coming up soon at Rockport Center for the Arts, I'm told, uh, at the Rockport Art Festival. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about what you have in store for that exhibition? Well, I have quite a few sculptures, you know, and mm -hmm. of course I've had traveling i've had exhibitions in many museums the last big one was in well i had one in stockholm sweden at the major museum there and then i had one here in in corpus christi in the art museum of south texas yes. and so some of these pieces will probably be the same to travel to rockport and a few new ones too of course and i don't know how many they're gonna put that's up to the curator there i work with her you know and, and she's great louise peron Louis Perron, he's a fantastic man. He's mm -hmm. just a magician. Really, you know, yes, I agree. I've been, <laughs> I've been a museum curator on three continents, and mm -hmm. I never met a museum director like him. Mm -hmm. We just love him. And uh, he somehow has a magic touch of raising funds. And mm -hmm. manages, he manages like fantastic in a kind way. You know, you always, you always have his attention, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's a fantastic and here it is two almost two city blocks wide art center in Rockport and, and it deals with visual arts it has a, um, a performing arts center it has school you know studios and it has you know everything and it has <laughs> culinary art too it's yes. incredible you know, uh, that, that's that's like magic. I've never seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. so I'm very honored to have a show there. Very. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we really appreciate um, just listening to you just talk about your experience and being a master artist. And uh, we really appreciate it. So, so thank you. Thank you very much, my dear. I appreciate it.